If you're an expert at identifying sparrows, skip this video because nobody wants to go through this again. But there is a secret to it, and I wish I had known that when I first started learning sparrows. Yeah, I know, a lot of them look alike, all little brown and streaky. They usually stay near the ground, often in cover. They can be real twerps. When you're trying to identify a sparrow, here is the first thing you should ask yourself. Where am I? Here's the secret. If you let them, sparrows will sort themselves out. So you don't have to. Sparrows are specialists. They have very strong preferences in habitat, and that's, in some cases, the only place you're going to find them. Yeah, sure, other families have strong preferences, but sparrows are right off the charts. Song sparrows are the big exception. They're generalists. They can be found just about anywhere in open habitat, on the forest edges, wherever, shopping malls, all the way across the continent. Before you try to identify any other sparrow, make sure you can identify this one. Chipping sparrows are also easy. They're all across North America, generally in the open, right at your feet. They're kind of tame, and they're easy to recognize. Small, whitish breast, reddish brown cap. They prefer open areas where they're easy to see. White-throated sparrows are common in the Northeast and across Canada in brushy forest edges. They winter all across the southern U.S., so a lot of people are familiar with them. They have a distinctive song, Old Sam Peabody, Peabody, Peabody. I was on a mountaintop climbing with my uncle in New Hampshire in the fourth grade, and it was haunting coming from all over the summit. And I've been birding by ear ever since that day. We're talking about how sparrows sort themselves out by habitat, so that if you're in a particular habitat, there's likely to be a particular sparrow. The point is, most sparrows are specialists. So where would you look for a swamp sparrow? In Maine, where I live, if there's a wetland with even one cattail in it, there's a swamp sparrow in it. And that's the only place. They sing a lot, right at the top of the cattail. Where would you find a field sparrow? Yeah, a field. But they're even pickier than that. They like it a little bit overgrown, maybe some brushy habitat around the middle of the field, some trees on the edge. But if it grows up too much, they're out of here. Summer nesting season, field sparrows in fields and nowhere else. Where would you find a grasshopper sparrow? In a grasshopper infested field. Savannah sparrows definitely out in the field. They don't even care that much about perches. Maybe a little shrub or just tall grass. They'll perch on that and sing. A hay field is good enough. Deep down in the grass in summer, that's where they're going to be. Vesper sparrows, short grass prairie. That's their basic niche. All the way from South Dakota into Saskatchewan, you're just tripping over them. But in Maine, large blueberry fields actually resemble that same habitat. And in Maine, blueberry fields, that's the only place you will find them. Fox sparrows are totally the opposite. They're northern forest boreal birds stretching all across Canada into Alaska and dipping down through the mountainous areas of the west. They are in Maine, but when I want to find one in summer, I have to go deep into the north Maine woods where almost nobody else goes. That's it. Or I could wait till migration season when they're under my feeder. Lincoln sparrow, totally a bog bird. In fact, there's one that won't shut up. I'm working over here. As you get far enough north into Newfoundland, Labrador, where it's all boggy, the Lincoln Sparrow basically replaces the Song Sparrow as your default bird. As troublesome sparrows go, these two are the worst, Nelson Sparrow and Saltmarsh Sparrow. Especially since they used to be the same species. The sharp-tailed sparrow was split in 1995 into the Nelsons and Saltmarsh Sparrow. And if you look close, you can see why there are subtle differences. But to look close, you have to get close in the one place they're going to be, tidal salt marshes. Well, that's mostly true. There is an interior race of Nelson Sparrow, but we're setting those aside. The two species are almost identical, but not quite. If you look close, you can see the salt marsh sparrow has a little more orange in the mustache. It's got a longer bill. It's got a more sloped forehead. And most important, the breast streaks are clear and fine. Nelson Sparrow, the breast streaks are a little blurrier, a little less obvious. Oh, and they also sort themselves out by geography. Saltmarsh sparrow ranges further south than the Nelson sparrow. 
They overlap along the mid part of the coast of Maine, but that's a pretty small overlap zone. The Nelson Sparrow goes all the way up into the northern Labrador. But never mind that, we're not talking about how to identify sparrows. We're talking about where to identify sparrows. And obviously it's not just in Maine. This is what's happening everywhere you go in North America. Where would you go to find a seaside sparrow along the Atlantic coast? Where would you go to find a sagebrush sparrow in the west? Baird sparrow inhabits only tall grass prairie in the northern part of the Great Plains. That's my lifer. I got that one in Saskatchewan and I knew right where I was supposed to look. Bachman sparrow inhabits only grassy pine woodlands in the southeastern United States. That's it. Altogether, there are 35 sparrows in North America that have sparrow in the name. When sparrows are making it tough, make it easy. Let them sort themselves out by habitat. Most of the time, what it is is determined by where it is. Or you can do it the old fashioned way. Try to find that little brown job scurrying under the bush among all those sparrow photos in the guidebook. Good luck with that.